My name is Dolores Mitchell, and I'm the executive director of the Group Insurance Commission. And I'm here to walk you through uh, some information about the Group Insurance Commission and what we see happening in health care and what we propose to do about it. And most importantly of all, to hear from you what your views and ideas and thoughts are. So uh, we have a lot of material to cover. Let's get started. This first slide tells us that the health care cost monster is alive and well, not just here in Massachusetts, but all over the United States. And the importance of that is that both individual workers and taxpayers are still going to have to support health care costs, which are still rising. Not only are we concerned about the actual cost, but we're talking most importantly about the fact that those costs are taking needed funds away from other services that we also want. So we're all paying the price one way or the other. And that shows us, and we've showed a similar slide to this uh, for the past couple of years, but it's a very graphic description of what the price of rising health care costs is to other services that you care about. Schools, uh, public safety, public health, higher education, and environmental uh, and uh, recreational services. So uh, health care costs going up are not just a matter of what is it taking out of your uh, paycheck, but also what services are you being deprived of. Uh, the next slide comes from the governor's recently filed House One budget. Uh, and what it shows you is that there's a gap between what usually uh, happens in the way of revenue collection and uh, uh, what has been happening. And you'll see there's a dip. And although it's a little uh, comforting to see that the blue line is going up a little bit uh, uh, from its previous low, but it isn't still enough to bring back those services uh, that the governor and uh, most of us want to have uh, available to us. So what are those issues that are being under uh, uh, funded and that we all care about? Uh, the gov and that the governor articulated uh, in House One and in his uh, uh, budget message about uh, what he proposes to do about it. And what he proposes to do about it, and uh, what I personally support and hope you will as well, because it involves you and your family and your family's future, uh, are investments in education and innovation and infrastructure. The real attention that is needed to the needs of the Commonwealth, uh, if we're going to have uh, sustained growth over time and see those revenue lines changing and perhaps more attention being paid to some of those areas uh, that have been uh, uh, shortchanged for the past few years, has to be involved with controlling health care costs. Uh, and so that we can get the kind of transportation system that we want, uh, the kind of investment in, in businesses, and the better roads and better uh, commuter rail and better uh, subway lines and so on that will make for a thriving community. Uh, so what are we doing about the health care cost monster? Uh, the first thing that I want to point your attention to is Chapter 224, uh, which was passed in the last few days of the past legislature, uh, after a good, long, uh, thoughtful, careful uh, look at uh, starting with the governor's proposals and going on for the next 18 months um, uh, to final enactment. And what it does uh, and what's relevant, I'm going to tell you in a few minutes what, how it's relevant uh, to what we're doing here at the GIC. It encourages uh, adoption of new ways of paying for care, moving away from what's called fee-for-service, uh, in which uh, providers get paid more for doing more, whether the doing more is a good idea or not. Uh, it gives you information uh, by emphasizing the need for price transparency so you can see who charges what. Uh, and what your obligation would be uh, as part of paying for whatever services you're using. 
Uh, and it specifically says that the GIC as well as the Medicaid program uh, need to be moving to all these alternative payment systems, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more uh, in a couple of minutes. Oh, and I think I'll pause here to point out that uh, those uh, that down in the right hand corner, of course, is the logo, and in the left hand corner is a tree. And when you uh, get your benefit decision guides, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, you'll see that that's the kind of motif uh, for this year. So uh, it's not anybody's doodling, it's a tree. Uh, let's move on to the next slide, uh, which is going to tell you what we're doing about health, uh, our, our role. Uh, in dealing not just with the cost uh, monster, but also with the quality uh, and access to health care that all of us need and want for ourselves and our families. What we're doing is saying to the health plans, we have got to plan for how much money we are going to spend, and we are going to put caps on how much money uh, we expect you to spend taking care of our folks. and. Uh, we're going to make you responsible for uh, keeping to those budgets. There's nothing like uh, being responsible in a financial way for encouraging people to do a better job uh, uh, than they have been able to do in the past in keeping costs down without sacrificing uh, quality. And let me, let me assure you very, very explicitly, we are not talking about cutting benefits. We are not talking about rewarding health plans or providers for denying you services. We're saying stop paying for each and everything you do. Uh, think about the whole patient. Think about how to provide good services for those patients. Uh, and think about costs as well. That's part of your responsibility. So uh, we're saying to the health plans, do a better job about being our change agents. Uh, and if you do, we will reward you. And if you do not, we are going to penalize you financially. So what we've called this is integrated risk-bearing uh, organization models. Uh, it's, not a to it's not a brand new concept that we thought up at the GIC. Uh, accountable care organizations, part of the federal uh, health care reform law, uh, moves in exactly the same way. And those are called ACOs uh, or accountable care organizations. An integrated risk-bearing uh, organization is uh, more or less the same thing. In any case, we're out to bid with that requirement of our health plans. And we're also, by the way, out to bid for mental health uh, vendors uh, for the Unicare and Tufts uh, members as well. And what's the kind of the grand picture? It's uh, called the uh, triple aim, which former uh, director of Medicare and Medicaid, Don Berwick, uh, coined uh, while he was in that job. And it's called the triple aim, and it calls for better patient care, uh, better care for the entire population, and at lower per capita costs. So the GIC, both in response to uh, the federal health care reform and to Chapter 224, essentially are talking about bending the cost curve. Now, if you can see what each of these lines um, stands for, what we're saying is that if we can do this right, instead of the top line, which just goes up, 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 what we hope to be able to accomplish is the bottom line, the blue one, the light blue one, in which, in fact, uh, if we can keep cost targets, uh, and if our health plans can help us to achieve those targets, uh, costs can actually go down, and that means so will your premiums. And the lines in between are various scenarios at which if we come in at 2%, if we come in at higher than 2%, and so on, uh, what would it look like? But where we will go if we do nothing is the dark blue line on the top, and where we will do if we succeed uh, is the light blue line at the bottom, and that's where we really want to be. So what are we trying to achieve here? We want to, or, and how, I guess, maybe is more relevant. We want to encourage health plans to recontract with their providers and set up new payment models. We want to increase the quality and care coordination uh, for the patients, and we want the health plans to put the providers that they contract with at risk to achieve those goals. We want to encourage early intervention, and we want to focus on wellness. 
and uh, to help keep track of all of this and do a better job of knowing what patients need what services and so on, we want to further encourage the use of electronic medical records. And the idea, is that, idea then is that we will have flat or declining premium trends instead of that sharp up, uh, upward line that we saw a few slides back. So what does this mean for you? We're going, you're going to be very strongly encouraged to designate a primary care provider. Uh, and I'm happy to say that you can now choose uh, an MD uh, or a nurse practitioner, uh, uh, which is uh, going to, there, are, there are a lot of those very well-trained uh, nurses out there who can provide many of the services that MDs uh, probably shouldn't be uh, uh, performing. Um, and uh, that can more efficiently be done by a nurse. Not to say you shouldn't go to a physician, but uh, that uh, providing primary care uh, practitioners uh, is probably going to best be served uh, if you have a, a broader range of selections for who you want to have as your primary care uh, uh, providers. Uh, focus networks, uh, some of which are what we have called limited networks, uh, uh, in which you will pay a lower premium because the benefits are the same, but the range of providers is smaller, and that saves money. Uh, we are going to continue our program of giving you incentives to use uh, quality, lower-cost providers. And all of this, uh, we hope, will lead to limited or declining premium changes uh, in the years ahead. Uh, there are very few uh, state mandates, uh, new state mandates uh, this year, and we are going to be adopting those. Uh, services for children with cleft palates, hearing aids for children, and uh, one that uh, came along rather late uh, in the game, uh, uh, equal treatment for oral cancer medications, which uh, we're just working on right now. Which leads us then to the next slide. Uh, which is other uh, health plan changes that are still under consideration. Uh, we're taking another look at the uh, timing of the calendar year deductible and uh, moving it from the calendar year to a fiscal year. Uh, that's still under consideration. It's unfortunately very expensive to implement uh, at the beginning, and maybe this isn't the best year to do it, but at least it's being considered. Wellness incentives, we're going to have all plans uh, give uh, a modest uh, gym membership benefit uh, to everybody uh, who wants it and who will use it, and we hope you will. Not use the benefit, but use the gym. And then finally, uh, greater coverage for tobacco cessation counseling. What's the OPEB Commission? It stands for Other Post-Employment Benefits. And what it is, um, what it was, it was uh, mandated by the legislature uh, to take a look at what has uh, become a looming financial problem for cities and towns as well as for the Commonwealth uh, about uh, how to pay for the rising costs of future retirees over the next decade or two, uh, whose costs uh, are going to have not been funded by and large, uh, and uh, for whom there is a great deal of concern uh, about uh, how to deal with uh, what could otherwise be another financial disaster. Uh, and this commission, on which I had the honor to serve, uh, recommended a series of changes uh, which um, uh, the legislature will be cons uh, considering over uh, the next uh, uh, the session that uh, has just started. And if you want to see how big the problem is, uh, if you look at this slide, uh, those blue spikes uh, or blue bars, uh, the, the per or maybe they're purple, uh, tell you what the cost could be. Uh, if we don't do uh, something, and the somethings are going to be cost uh, containment, the recommendations of the OPEB Commission itself. Uh, I, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it, uh, but you'll be hearing more about it in, in future weeks and months. 
and uh, then hopefully that line which will say, yeah, we can afford to continue to cover uh, retirees' health care will be if there's a combination of both the uh, successful cost containment and uh, adoption of some of the reforms recommended by the OPEB Commission. Uh, some other things that we're still considering are final selection of the vendors, uh, the final rates. The legislature itself has the power to decide what the premium contribution ratios are for state employees, and this is decided, as you know, at the local level. Uh, by uh, local uh, officials working with uh, collective bargaining units. And uh, then on uh, uh, municipality news, specifically for July 1st, the town of Drake uh, recently told us that they're joining uh, the GIC, uh, joining the group that joined uh, last July and another group that joined last December, or January rather, and uh, then the recently enacted bill by the legislature authorizing the uh, municipalities to participate in the GIC's retiree dental plan, and 13 communities have already signed up for that program. Uh, speaking of things dental, uh, we have some good news uh, about uh, our dental program. There will be increased reimbursement to your providers for 10 of the most common procedures. That means uh, lower out-of-pocket costs for you. The, uh, the total that is covered uh, uh, has gone up from $1,000 to $1,250. That's a very nice uh, increase. Uh, dental implants, uh, which a lot of people uh, in the retiree community need and which were not previously covered are now going to be covered. And uh, then there's some changes in the frequency uh, with which a number of procedures are done. And I think you'll find out all of that when you look at your benefit decision guides when you get them. One thing we're doing this year that um, uh, I hope you will all uh, pay some attention to is we're having an open enrollment for participation in the Commonwealth's long-term disability program. This is a program that uh, helps you uh, continue to get a paycheck uh, and, and continue to have income when you're out for a, uh, an illness or a disability or an injury uh, for longer than you have uh, uh, anticipated. And we have a healthy enrollment in that program, but not as healthy as we should have. So what we're doing uh, after annual enrollment or, or uh, extending open enrollment from April 10th through all the way through June 14th uh, for coverage that will be effective on October 1st. That's to give us time to get your materials in and to the carrier and so on. And this, when it's open enrollment, it means there is no medical requirement. As long as you haven't been denied such coverage in the past and you use a special open enrollment form, which you can get on our website and other places. So th th this is a very important program. We think it, uh, more people uh, should be in it than are, and we encourage you to take this opportunity to make it easier for you to join. Uh, another thing that is going to continue uh, is the uh, Well Mass program. Uh, the governor did include it in House One, coverage for it that is, uh, and it's uh, available to employees in uh, state executive offices, constitutional offices, uh, the legislature uh, and uh, uh, early state retirees and their GIC covered uh, spouses uh, in that pre-65 uh, year old uh, age bracket. And you can get health assessments, uh, you can get health coaching, uh, there are other online resources. For those of you who work uh, uh, in state uh, buildings, uh, uh, there are lunch and learn sessions uh, that uh, are occurring all over the Commonwealth and which have been very well received. Another uh, measure that you might want to take a look at is that we've expanded uh, the opportunities for you to uh, do what's called buy out uh, your insurance. What you need to do is, if you have a working spouse, you might want to compare theirs uh, to their coverage to yours. And if it works for you and your family, uh, simply tell us that you want to buy out your insurance. 
And uh, what will happen is you'll then receive 12 payments of 25% of the full cost of your GIC premium uh, while you participate in that program. But this next thing is just something we've done to make uh, state government more efficient and uh, uh, work better and also help us with collecting overdue or past due um, uh, premiums that people didn't pay uh, while they were out, uh, while they were off payroll. So it means, or people who were on what's called direct pay, people who are uh, on COBRA, for example. Uh, it used to be, or it was until this week, that you got uh, uh, one bill for each of the uh, uh, insurance plans that you uh, were enrolled in, uh, life insurance, dental vision, health, uh, and so on. Uh, and now we have combined uh, those bills. You'll just get one um, telling us what you uh, owe us, uh, telling you what you owe us. And uh, also we facilitated making it possible for you to pay those bills online. And um, uh, this week employees and retirees are, are uh, getting the first of those bills and survivors will begin uh, in March. So, uh, a word to the wise. Uh, it, one of the features of this is that uh, it's got better tracking of people who don't pay their bills. So if you are out uh, uh, and not on payroll and you get this bill, uh, uh, my advice to you is pay it up sooner rather than later. You don't want to risk losing your coverage. So what's next? Uh, we're going to, uh, the commission's going to vote on uh, February 15th on health plans and mental health carriers and benefit changes, those few that I mentioned before. On March 6th, the final decision about rates and final plan options uh, will be voted by the commission. Annual enrollment, uh, the coordinators get trained during the first week in April, and then annual enrollment begins on Wednesday, April 10th, and it goes through Wednesday, May 8th. And then with the exception of the long-term disability, which will stay open until June 14th. Uh, what you're soon going to get is an annual enrollment letter uh, to your home and uh, that little square that those of you who are digitally sophisticated know that you can use your iPhone uh, or whatever and that will pop you right onto our website. The GIC coordinators are going to have a new manual and you can follow us on Twitter at uh, MassGIC. So a lot of ways that we're trying to communicate with you to keep you up to date on what we're doing. And here, remember I mentioned the trees. Uh, these are the uh, benefit decision guides, uh, which you should get before annual enrollment begins. Active enrollees, uh, active uh, employees, those will be available at your GIC benefits uh, coordinator. So you need to ask there for a copy retirees and survivors get theirs at home and all of this by the way will be available on uh, our website beginning in uh, uh, early April. And then the health fairs uh, and a lot of you like to uh, uh, come in person and talk uh, about uh, what you're going to sign up for rather than uh, on the web or on uh, uh, or at your local uh, GIC coordinator's office. So for those of you who like to do that, we're going to have 14 of these. Uh, the, the schedule will be on our website sometime in uh, the middle of February. We try very hard to distribute these health fairs uh, geographically, but with particular emphasis on new locations uh, for new health and retiree dental members. And we will have sign language interpretation at at least some of the fairs. Uh, and all of those details will be on our website. And speaking of our website, uh, there is its uh, uh, address at the top. And all of these uh, features will be on it. Uh, annual enrollment news, rates, uh, frequently asked questions, forms uh, to expedite your making your decision that you can download, new summaries of benefits and coverage, and links to plan websites so you can go into greater detail about the plans you're interested in. So the questions you need to be asking yourself is, does your current health plan still meet your needs? We urge you to consider the limited network plans. Save yourself money. They have the same benefits. 
And the only uh, downside is that there are fewer numbers of doctors and hospitals in the network, but if you find the ones that you uh, might consider going to and that provide good services and are within reasonable access to where you live, uh, you will save yourself money each and every month by joining one of these limited network plans. So weigh those options. Check whether or not, word of caution, uh, if you're in active treatment, be sure to check to see if you, uh, your own doctor and the hospital that you go to uh, is in fact in that, uh, in that plan. Look at the premium cost and uh, don't forget, just a word of caution, you sign up, that means you sign up for a year. If your doctor should happen to stop practice or to move or you should move, uh, you uh, will probably need to pick out a new doctor or hospital in the plan, not, uh, you won't have the option of ch changing plans. The last word of uh, how to choose a provider or how to choose a physician or a hospital, uh, we are continuing tiering those providers uh, with a copay differential uh, depending upon which ones you choose. So tier one, that's got the lowest copay. Uh, tier two, uh, the middle copay, and tier three, the, high, uh, the, the highest copay. And again, if you want to save money, pay attention to that information that we're giving you, and uh, you can use it to your own advantage. So these are exciting uh, and challenging times that we're living in in the healthcare world. We're doing our best to provide you continued excellent care. Uh, at affordable prices and good luck to you, good luck to us and uh, we look forward to a good FY14.